now to South Sudan, a nation that has been embroiled in political wrangling with on and off agreements between President Salva Kiir and uh, President Re Vice President Riek Machar. I'm joined in the studio by Governor Dene Chagor of Jongle State. Governor, it's great to have you in the studio with us today. Let's start there. Last, just early this month, uh, President Salva Kiir and Vice President Riek Machar agreed to resume talks and have their forces meet and continue the discussions to move the country forward. Do we know if these rival forces have already begun the talks? Well, Esther, thank you so much for having me, and I'm so glad to be here in Washington, D.C., and here with you. Um, of course, uh, South Sudan has been going through this uh, period of turmoil, but with the uh, determination from South Sudanese people to make sure that we put our country first above any interest or any influence. So uh, we signed this peace agreement, the revitalized peace agreements, and we are working on implementation of this peace agreement. So when it comes to the security arrangement, which you just asked, Last week, uh, the president, Salva Kiir, and, and Dr. Riyak Mishar, the leader of SPNMIO, and the other political parties, signed an agreement that will allow the country to form the unified forces that the agreement asked for. And so, so far, it's going so well. And soon, we will have the unified force in South Hopefully, Sudan. Hopefully, because, you know, they've signed them on and mm -hmm. off. They mm -hmm. break uh, apart. You know, mm -hmm. one goes one way, the other one goes one way. And then the people of South Sudan are left wondering, are we ever going to have a country? This is the youngest nation right. in Africa. And you, you're yet to realize stability in the country. Do right. you believe that this time round, these agreements will hold? I personally believe that. I do know that uh, because I'm part of that agreement. I'm part of the negotiation of this agreement, and I'm also part of the implementation of this agreement. So in any agreement anywhere in the world, you know, there's always ups and downs. And that's why it's called an agreement, because it means that you don't get all you want, and the other side don't get all they, all they want. And this is the same things that this agreement does in South Sudan. So we are, we are taking, you know, critical steps to it. and. Something that people need to know about this agreement is that it's very complicated. It was negotiated in two separate countries. At the first portion of it, it was negotiating in, in, in Ethiopia, and then the last portion of it was negotiated in Khartoum. The two portion of it, you know, there are some part of it that we, the South Sudanese people, have to now go and negotiate and move on with it. So there has been a lot of time where, you know, we, we move on and then we find a stumbling block and then the parties go into negotiation among themselves, find a solution to it, and move on with it. So this is how it has been going. And so far, we are very hopeful and very optimistic. Very optimistic. Let's hope that yeah, this sure. works. But let's uh, move on to the ongoing food crisis in South mm -hmm. Sudan. Of course, the whole region of uh, the Horn of Africa area, you know, Somalia, they are affected by the drought. Right. However, in Sudan, there have been ethnic clashes, intercommunal violence that prevent people from going to tend to their farms. What are you doing specifically in the state of Jongle, where you're governor, to address this situation? You know, those things have been happening because of the insecurity. And that's why we are, you know, moving as fast as we can to make sure that, one, we have the unified force that can take, you know, secure of all the citizens in, in the country. Number two, we want to make sure that, you know, people return back to their home, to their livelihood. So the first priority for every South Sudanese now is to make sure that we have a peace agreement that's in place that put the security of our people first, that put the security of our country first. And so with this intercommunal violence and the conflicts, those has been there. But, you know, we're not saying that the government can't do anything about it. We are working so hard to make sure that all the stakeholders, from villages to small towns, you know, the chief, everybody have the stakes and get involved into making sure that our people are secure and that we are people return homes. And very briefly, mm. women rights especially in Jongle State. Mm -hmm. Every woman I've spoken to from South Sudan talks about not being heard. They are only seen. What are you doing about that? What we're doing about it is that in this peace agreement that we are implementing, it gives 35%, 35% to women. And now, as political parties, we are making sure that 35% is guaranteed to every woman in South Sudan. But not just women who does not have a political party because we are implementing the peace agreement. We are doing that and also calling, you know, on the entire country to put women's rights first, to put women's rights at front, because these rights are God-given rights. 
you know, these are not government-given rights or, you know, these are the rights that every woman enjoyed everywhere in the world, even here in the United States. So we want to make sure that we do that. But as we are implementing the peace agreement, those rights also goes into, you know, scrutiny. And so, remember, you know, they're ups and downs. I remember this interview, uh, Very good. Governor, and uh, hold you to account Thank if you we so don't much. hear you women's do rights in South Sudan. Thank yeah. you so much, Governor Chagol. Thank you. Dinesh Chagol is the governor of South Sudan, Jongle State.